Now that we've used our trial balance to create an income statement, an equity statement, and a comprehensive income statement, we can use those balances to create our balance sheet. Now let's get started with that. Now that we know the balances of all of our accounts, we can do our balance sheet. So for company B, balance sheet, and the balance sheet is for December 31st, 2020. We do, it is not for the period ended like we do for the income statement uh, and the equity statements. Okay, there's our balance sheet stuff. Now, the big, big category we start with for balance sheet is going to be assets. Assets. Now, the balance sheet, the accounts are typically going to be listed in order of liquidity. So liquidity means how soon it will convert to cash or be used up. So the most readily convertible into cash is cash itself. So that will go first, but we typically start with what we call current assets. For current assets, current assets means that they will convert to cash or be used up within one year or one operating cycle, whichever is longer. Cash is already cash. So that is the one we're gonna start with. And our cash balance is from over here, 96.10. Next, the next thing we have, we do have accounts receivable, but we also have trading securities. Trading securities are very readily convertible into cash. So we're actually gonna list those next. Trading securities is 80.40. Okay, now we're, that's our trading securities. Now we are gonna do accounts receivable. Accounts receivable was 22,950. Okay, cash, accounts receivable, and trading securities. I'm trying to figure out whether we have any other current assets. Those are those. Oh, we have allowance for doubtful accounts, and we have inventory. Okay, so now that we have accounts receivable, we also need to do less allowance for doubtful accounts, which should be 1490. So we will put that in actually as a negative. And we also had inventories. Our total current assets for the period are $70,130. Now the current assets are done. The next category we are going to do is going to be long-term investments. Long-term investments. We have bonds and stocks up here. Those are our only two investment accounts. So bonds was 15,520 and stocks is 14,540, which should give us total long-term investments. Next, we are going to do property, plant, and equipment. We had a bunch of different things here. We have, we have land, we have buildings, we have accumulated depreciation on buildings, and then we have equipment down here, and then we have accumulated depreciation on equipment. So we end up with a total of kind of three accounts and two contra accounts. So we'll start with land, and then we're gonna do buildings, then we are going to less accumulated depreciation on buildings, which is going to be negative because it's accumulated depreciation is our contra asset account for buildings. So less the accumulated depreciation on buildings, which was 75.20. Equipment was our last asset, or our last property, plant, and equipment. Equipment was 31.530 right down here. And we need accumulated depreciation on equipment, which was 31.50. That should give me total property, plant, and equipment of $84,860. Okay, there is total property, plant, and equipment. My last major category of assets is gonna be intangibles. I had two intangibles, if you recall from when we went through it. We have a franchise and patents. So there's my franchise, there's my patents down there. So start with franchise. Remember, a franchise is uh, already reported net of the amortization on it, but the franchise was 7760. And patents were 9360.
total intangibles should be $17,120. Now, that is the last of my assets. So I just need to now total them up. So total assets equals my current assets plus my long-term investments plus my property, plant, and equipment plus my total intangibles gives me total assets of $202,170. There's total assets. Next is going to be liabilities and stockholders equity. Liabilities that I first section. Just like assets, I'm going to start with my current liabilities. My current liabilities, I have some short-term notes payable, I have some accounts payable, dividends payable, and accrued liabilities, and that's it. So I have four areas that I'm gonna list out here. I'm gonna start with accounts payable. I then have notes payable. I then have dividends payable of 72.10. And then my last current asset was accrued liabilities. There's all of my current liabilities, total current liabilities of $40,400. If I move on, I now have long-term liabilities. Long-term notes payable and bonds payable were my only two long-term liabilities. So we'll do notes payable and bonds payable. So my total long-term liabilities is 94680 now that will give me my total liabilities. Add my current, add my long term, gives me my total liabilities of $135,080. That's my total liabilities. Now, now I have to do my stockholders equity. These accounts, as we just talked about, I have common stock, I have treasury stock, I have additional paid in capital, I have non-controlling interests, accumulated other comprehensive income and retained earnings. Essentially, all the things listed from my stockholders' equity statement need to go in my stockholders' equity section. So, if we break out paid in capital, uh, sometimes you'll see paid in capital broken out separately. Sometimes you'll just see everything listed. I'm going to break it out separately. So, paid in capital consists of common stock and additional paid in capital. So my common stock was 52,830 and my additional paid in capital was 4,480, which gives me a total. Now that I have my total paid in capital, now I'm just gonna basically lay out all of my other accounts. So retained earnings equals, just link them up there to simplify things. Retained earnings equals $15,353. Accumulated other comprehensive income equals $898. Less my treasury stock, which gives me total company B stockholders equity of 63,991, which agrees to my equity statement, which is good. It better, otherwise I'd mess something up. So. Total company B stockholders equity of $63,991. I now have to take out my non-controlling interest. Gives me my total equity. My total equity is $67,290. I will add that to my liabilities. So I have my total liabilities and stockholders equity equals my total liabilities plus stockholders equity, $202,370. And that means I messed up one of my numbers here because it should agree up there. So I typed in something wrong. Let's see where it is. There's the problem. Treasury stock should be negative. If I add to it, I should add a negative to it to give me 97.70 down here of 9770, less treasury stock down here. That gives me 202,170, which agrees to my total assets. There we go, our balance sheet balances, and we have our income statement for the period, our comp statement of comprehensive income for the period, our statement of stockholders equity 
for the period and our balance sheet for the period ended. So that wraps it up for this. We will probably next do a cash flow statement. Have a great day and God bless.